The idea that um, happiness resides in seeing that there is no doer and that nothing is done and that life is um, a series of happenings um, has a certain traction and a, a certain attraction <laughs> definitely because it lets one off the hook it also lets everybody else off the hook everyone's off the hook because no one's done anything because there is no doer but it doesn't work um, the example is given of um, for example returning to the car park and finding that someone has um, damaged your car and, and driven off and uh, one is advised to see that the negative feelings one has about this, the inconvenience, the annoyance, etc, 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 the blame, etc, 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 are simply feelings arising as a result of an event. And that there's nothing you can do to change the event, so why put yourself through having all those feelings? And of course, you know, of course. However, what happens when someone decides to, uh, for some reason of their own, decides to hurt you, say, or steal something from you, or hurt someone you love, or, you know, deliberately do something um, damaging? What happens then? What happens then? Um, you know, the idea of just sort of sitting back and just sort of saying, oh, well, you know, it's all just arising in the moment and it can't be any other than how it is. So let go. It doesn't work. And that's why uh, these ideas are kind of limited to um, small, softly lit rooms um in meeting places <laughs> and haven't spread out across the world because you know if they are as good as as if they're all they're cracked up to be and i'm not saying they're complete tosh but they have um huge limitations but if if these ideas are as good as they are said to be how comes this stuff hasn't been adopted by everyone in the world and we're all living at peace The key to it, to my mind, is not to convince oneself that there is no doer. <clears throat> because the, the, the problem with this is that there is, in the self, there, there is a doer and there is a perceiver. There is the perceived, the self as object that has a name, that takes choices, that does stuff that exists in the world as an object to interact with other objects and other people and for other objects and people to interact with that self. There is that doer self. Um, and we are all heavily identified with that doer self. And that's why we walk around feeling like life should be a certain way. Um, and having all these feelings of dissatisfaction and unhappiness because life isn't the way we want it to be. That's the aim of the object self, the doer self, is to create the conditions that it wishes to experience. And of course, you know, success in that endeavour is hugely limited because it ain't just us. You know, everyone else is up to the same thing and sometimes wishes clash what then? Um, so that, that's the uh, perceived object self, perceived by other objects in the world and perceived by the subject self that simply is, that does nothing. Now, if we are more identified in terms of proportion, if we are equally, let's put it this way, if we are equally identified with subject self, that perceives 
and just is. And object self, that is perceived and does. Rather than trying to do away with that bit and pretend it doesn't exist and that the only real thing is the self that perceives the subject self. They're both real. They're both real. Um, I mean, you know, if you walk up to someone and kick them in the shins and then say, hey, you know, I didn't do that. That just kind of arose in the moment. And I don't see why you're getting so, like, narky with me about it because, you know, it was just the product of my genes and up-to-date conditioning. Chill out. <laughs> you ain't going to get on very well with you. <laughs> happiness does not reside in that <laughs> and sort of waiting for everybody else to get enlightened that you don't in fact exist and you didn't do anything and hey guess what nor did they ever, at all ever happiness does not reside in that happiness resides in an easy flow and an equal investment in self as doer and self as perceiver, as observer, as simply self, as consciousness, as conscious awareness. They're both real. Overinvestment with either of them will create problems. Overinvestment with the doer, with the subject self, leads to the illusion that we can control everything and this lifelong quest to get things just the way we freaking well want them. And it makes us really, really controlling. And the, the end of that spectrum is the psychopath. Overinvestment with the subject self that isn't the doer, that is the observer, that simply is, that is consciousness. The end of that, the end of that spectrum is the cabbage, the comatose cabbage sitting in its own waste because it doesn't do anything. The key thing is equal investment in the two and easy flow between the two and to be invested in the doer when it's time to do and invested in the perceiver when it's time to perceive. And the height of this, the height of this and the the true union of this is to be invested in both equally simultaneously. That is happiness. Not the pursual, the pursuit, sorry, of um, the outsourcing of agency through the uh, de-existing of the doer. Never going to work. Never going to work. <laughs>